Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to join you all today on the occasion of World Habitat Day. I regret that I'm not able to be there personally due to the COVID-19 crisis and travel restrictions. Housing for all is the theme for the World Habitat Day, and it has never been more obvious how urgent that message is than it is during COVID-19. As I point out in my forthcoming report to the UN General Assembly on COVID-19 and the right to adequate housing, housing has always been a matter of life and death. Having a home is central to provide shelter against rain, storm, cold, or heat. It is also the first line of defense against extreme events and crises such as the COVID-19 pandemic. Our home is essential for accessing job opportunities, hospitals, schools, food, sanitation, transportation, water, and energy, and other public services. Thus, housing is not only a human right on its own, but also a precondition for the enjoyment of many other fundamental rights, including dignity and overall well-being. The COVID-19 crisis has reminded us of this most acutely. At the peak of the COVID-19 emergency response, more than 3.9 billion people, or half of the world's population, were asked or ordered to stay at home by their governments. They were also asked to socially or physically distance themselves from people outside their household. Yet for a majority of these people, these emergency orders to prevent the spread of the virus have been difficult, if not impossible to follow. Billions live today in informal settlements or in overcrowded homes where physical distancing is not an option. A massive eviction crisis looms large for renters, while many millions of refugees and internally displaced people, as well as millions of people who are in situations of homelessness, do not have a place to call their home. Forced evictions have continued, if not accelerated, during the pandemic in too many countries exposing vulnerable groups to higher risks of contacting the virus. For many women, children, and members of the LGBT community around the world, staying at home has also meant being in a place they cannot call safe, where they have been subjected to increased risks of domestic abuse. People in psychiatric and social care institutions, in migrant worker hostels, prisons, and care homes for the elderly have been left unprotected, resulting in high rates of infection and death. Alarmingly, the infection and mortality rates in too many countries are far worse among their racial, ethnic, and other minorities and indigenous peoples. COVID-19 has not been equal in its impacts, which is an unfortunate result of pre-existing discrimination and inequalities in societies. The COVID-19 crisis has therefore stressed the urgency of treating housing as a fundamental human right and not as a commodity. It has pushed governments and others to recognize and address the pre-existing housing crisis, with almost a quarter of the global population not having a safe place to live in peace and dignity. Many COVID-19 emergency response measures have shown that right to housing can actually be realized when local and national governments put housing at the center of their political agenda. Many governments have been able to declare temporary bans on evictions, house the homeless, and offer protection to renters through rent caps, subsidies, and other social and financial support. Many of these initiatives have proved that housing as a human right is central to the management of the pandemic. They now need to be put on a durable and sustainable footing as part of a recovery and rebuilding plan with housing as a human right firmly at the center of it. It is time now to capitalize on the measures that have been put in place during the pandemic as emergency responses and to ensure that we do not go back to the pre-pandemic policies, which will further exacerbate the pre-existing inequalities. Millions of people are at risk of losing their homes once temporary bans and evictions are lifted. People lack funds to pay their rents or mortgages. Emergency social support payments expire and homelessness skyrockets. Thus, the temporary measures such as eviction bans need to continue during the pandemic. But beyond that, decent housing for all needs to be put at the center of the recovery, embedded in sustainable urban and economic policies. In my forthcoming report to the UN General Assembly on COVID-19 and the right to adequate housing, I have made a number of recommendations, which if accepted and implemented, will address housing for all without discrimination. Among many recommendations, I have called for a global moratorium on forced evictions during the pandemic, 
to collect and make public data on COVID-19 and its disaggregated impact on the right to adequate housing in terms of multiple identities and vulnerabilities, arrange accommodations for people experiencing homelessness during the duration of the crisis, and make plans to exit people into permanent housing, improve and continue social protection measures during the massive unemployment crisis due to the economic impact of COVID-19, decongest prisons, detention camps, and our other institutions, and provide alternative accommodations to persons in such institutions. I have also called for the right to housing to be at the forefront of response and recovery measures and ensure that sufficient resources are allocated towards realizing the right to housing for all, to ensure that the response and recovery measures are not discriminatory, to end forced evictions permanently and enact laws to ensure an eviction process which is fully consistent with international human rights law, and to put in place a number of structural measures which will ensure affordable housing for all by ensuring unemployment support and protecting the rights of tenants. Ladies and gentlemen and excellencies, we are presently at a crossroads to address the challenges revealed during the COVID-19 crisis. A framework of shared and collective response is needed as the UN Secretary General reminded us in his report on shared responsibility, global solidarity, responding to the socioeconomic impacts of COVID-19. Ensuring the right to adequate housing is a shared responsibility of national and local governments, civil society, the private sector, and the international community, and for which they are all accountable. Only together, we can make sure that no one is left behind. I welcome an opportunity to engage in constructive dialogue with governments and other stakeholders about these and other recommendations that emerge from the report so that we all work towards making housing a reality for all which is indeed a question of life and death as COVID-19 crisis has reminded us. Thank you very much.